Dead ignition, no problem. When you work on all-terrain vehicles, you discover pretty quickly that a very, very common problem is no spark, hacked wire harness, destroyed <laughs> uh, CDI box, all those things. And after watching a bunch of William Stratton's videos on how he was wiring these Chinese 12-volt CDI boxes, into Honda products, I said, well, if I go with the 12 volt battery, I could create my own portable CDI box and not worry about having a battery, a charging system, and all those other wonderful things. So I came up with this box first. This is the first generation CDI box. Um, it worked, no problem. The CDI box, the CDI unit, I put in there um, was from a GUI 6. The spark is a little bit more advanced so it had a tendency to kick back. The leads are a little too short and uh, there's no voltmeter on there so you can't be sure that you have a full 12 volts. I did put the switch on there. You can see the switch light up but you can't be sure um, of how many volts is there. I built a second generation unit, little longer leads. Um, the CDI box I put into it was known as a four pin 12 volt CDI, which is more for the uh, made in China um, 125cc units. Much happier spark, the longer leads made life easier. Unfortunately, that was lost with my toolbox which prompted me to make this third generation box. You can see the leads are much, much longer, right, through a grommet and all that, so they don't get pulled out. The spark lead is longer. I went with a 12-volt um, battery from the Warrior, and I'll show that to you, clear cover. And I think you guys can see that. Right, see the 12.1? That's telling you how much voltage is on the lithium ion battery. So you don't stand out here and pull the string until you fall over. Um, anyway, this thing wouldn't start. I figured I'd start it and warm it up and show you guys how easy it is to start. It wouldn't start. So then I put my portable CDI unit on it and you see three poles later it was running actually I'm not going to show you all three poles but three poles later it was running so there we go um, what is attached to this video is how I built this box um, you know how to wire it what I put in it what everything costs all the at trivia so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and yeah I know I gotta finish this thing so here is the portable CDI box and you guys can see I stuffed it in my toolbox with everything else um, you turn it on 12.1 volts you know it's charged that's a good thing should you need to charge it right Plug that right in, plug it in, and there's a little light that comes on there. And when the light turns green, it's fully charged. I also know a 12.1 voltage charged. And the nice thing is, as you're using it, if it's doing anything strange, you could keep an eye on it. 
And if you watch this voltage slip below 12, you could say, hey, maybe I should recharge the thing. Now, let me show you how to hook it up. So it just so happens I have this Honda motor right here. And I know there's a pulse generator underneath there with an advance and the whole shoot and match, a mechanical advance. And I see two wires. See the blue wire, see the green wire. Green, think of ground, right? Bang, hooked up. When you're looking at the red wire, it's going to the CDI box in there, right? Where the pulse generator, the high side of the pulse generator. If I wanted to do this right, this should actually be a blue wire. Ground. You need a ground <laughs> for spark to make sure it gets to the spark plug. The um, ground that goes into the CDI box, it kind of gets here eventually by putting the wire directly on that. This hooks up to the ground of the circuitry, the ground on the battery. See the black clamp right there on the battery. Takes care of all that. Just plug in the spark plug wire turn it on and every time the magnet goes by the pulse generator it sends a pulse to the box box has its own power source inside it'll fire a spark out here so all set up so you've decided to build yourself a portable CDI box well first thing you're gonna need is the box um, and you guys will see that though I looked this over and I've built CDI boxes out of boxes that just look like this, I decided not to use it. I decided to go with this box, which I found in a scrap bin, and you guys could see, what is it about, 18 centimeters, 7 inches wide by something like five inches and you guys could see the centimeters somewhere around two inches there you go so now you know the size of the box once you have a box you might want to put a lid on it and you could see I spent a whole dollar here and there's the lid and how did I cut this Dremel tool with a saw blade on it. How did I drill these holes? Dremel tool with, I don't know, what do you want to call that bit? A rasp on it, a pointy rasp. So that gives me the box and that gives me the lid. I decided to go clear this time because um, I wanted to lay it out and build it easily. By going clear, I was able to see where to drill these holes, right? And by going clear, I was able to see where to cut that line so it would fit the box well. We have the box, the lid, self-tapping hardware to bolt it on. And notice I recessed it a little bit in from the edge. This clear plastic cover is going to get destroyed one scratch, one dent, one crack at a time. But I figured I'd give it a chance by moving it in, rounding the edges, and doing all those wonderful things. Now you need the CDI kit. You could buy the wire harness, the coil... Um, right here, you'll even get an on and off switch that you don't have a use for. And this is the most important part. This is a 12 volt powered, and when you have the little schematic here, you see that sick switch 12 volts. That way you got the right CDI. You already know you need the wire harness. Take that CDI box, it's AC powered, you don't need that. Put that aside. Then you're going to need a switch to turn it on and off. And then you're going to need this little lamp thing. So now that I've showed you everything, let's do some 
quick math. Call that 10 bucks. Call that 20 bucks. You're up to 30. That brings you to 40. This takes you to under 50. What else do you need? Next thing you need is the Harbor Freight 12 volt with the ion battery with charger. There you have it, another 15 bucks. So you're gonna have about 65 plus the box invested. Once again, I got my box for free from garbage and I got the lid for another dollar. If you could do better than that, go for it. So it doesn't cost too much to build. Once you have all your stuff, you could put it in the box as I have there. Kind of just piled it up. Or you could go caveman style. Just plug everything into the harness, hook it up, smash that onto your spark plug. 12 volts between here and ground. Take your blue wire, extend it a bit. Hook that to the uh, blue wire on the pulse generator, to the other side of the pulse generator to ground. Hook ground to ground. Make sure your engine's well grounded. Smash on the spark plug wire. And given once you put 12 volts on this, she's ready to take off. So, once again, caveman style. Or we could build something that actually looks nice and you might be proud of. When I came to layout time right I wanted to put this in the corner of the box and bolt it in so you could see I kind of made a template to allow me to do that and you can see how I poked the hole right there then I made a template that allowed me to figure out where to put the second hole so the first hole allows me to bolt the coil to the box and the second hole allows me to pop the spark plug wire out. So let me install that. At this point, you've bought all this stuff, you got your box, are you going to go caveman, you got to hook it all up. So typically it shows up looking just like this, that's your wire harness. Spark coil. And this is the CDI box. Some of the kits you get will also have a kill switch. Ignore it. Some of the kits you get, um, if there are five wires in here, right? If this is a little smaller, that means it's an AC one. Ignore it. That's why I specifically have you buy this separately to make sure you get the right one, a DC one, right? So you got all this junk. How do you hook it up? Really tough. This is the only place this could plug in. So, plug it in. Done. Right? Ignore it. Ignore it. What do we have left? The banana clips? Or the bullet connectors? They plug in. Bang, bang, right? Green to green and black and yellow to black and yellow. Then what do we have left? We have these wires here. I put two black wires on this ground and ran them outward. Right? So two black wires on ground and I ran it outward. The red and black, this eventually wants to get the 12 volts from the CDI box, right? You can hook it to the battery <laughs> and make sure one side of the battery is also grounded. Um, you could hook it to a switch. You could hook it to whatever you want to hook it to. But this has to be plus 12 volts. This ground needs to go to the negative 12 volts it also needs to go to the case so you have a spark and it also needs to go to the low side of the pulse generator 
So you're actually looking at three wires on this if you want to count that high. And lastly, the blue wire. The blue wire goes to the high side of the pulse generator. That's all you have to do to hook it up. And you might be looking at it and going, what about this? Well, that's if you want to push the put a push button uh, for turning it off if you were using the AC one. And what's the other one? The other one is for a key switch. If you, once again, to turn it off if you're using the AC one and using this on a pit bike. So you don't have to do anything with these. Just ignore them. That's all it takes to hook it up. About putting a switch in, you put a switch obviously in series with this. I recommend putting a fuse in series and I also put a voltmeter in it so that when you put 12 volts here you're also putting 12 volts to the voltmeter and the other side of the voltmeter also has to go to ground and by voltmeter I mean this guy I think that's really a handy thing to have that way you know what's cooking so you know how to build it and you can see the size case it squeezes into you have the bill of materials for everything I used to go into this case um, except the garbage box you know how to wire it you know how to hook it up the way I determined what the high and low side of my pulse generator typically the high side is blue or blue and white <laughs> um, so look for blue and you're thinking about that typically it has a wire that goes along with it that's the low side of it sometimes the low side of the pulse generator is hooked directly to ground or sometimes you got to hook it to ground I guess that about um, does it I think you know what you have to do to build one of these now, or at least find yourself a long way down the path. I hope the third generation box suits you all well for anybody who builds the third generation. Um, there's a Bayou video that I'm going to make shortly that I'm going to use this for. It'll show you how to hook it up on the Bayou. It'll give you the colors for our Kawasaki. So I hope that helps. For somebody who's going to do a Kawasaki. I'm also going to, um, there's a Suzuki in the future. There's also that um, Lanai, what is it, Talon cart, that 400cc wonder junk thing I have. You probably see it on that also. So anyway, you're going to be seeing a lot of this. I make good use of these boxes. I hope this um, video has helped you. It's a long one, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I need you all to keep your feet down, your heads up, and I need you all to get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.